Sometimes I worry that this is like too weird, you know? Hello everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Viet Vegan because I am Viet and I'm vegan and today we're going to be talking about things that have helped me with my eczema that are vegan and cruelty free. Before I get into that, I want to talk to you guys about BetterHelp who has graciously sponsored today's video. If you haven't heard of BetterHelp before, BetterHelp is an online service that connects people to online therapists. They're credentialed, they're licensed, they are just as legitimate therapists as the in-person therapists that you might see, um, but they are much more affordable and much more accessible than going to an in-person therapist. So I don't know about you, but I don't have medical insurance. For me to find solutions to help me with my mental health, I have to pay everything from out of my own pocket. When I was looking for a therapist uh, before, typically therapists range between $75 to $200 per session, and you typically have about one session a week. Whereas with BetterHelp, it's about $35 US a week, so it's half the price. The great thing about BetterHelp is that it connects you to a therapist that actually meets your needs. So if you're someone who has mental health issues related to your identity, LGBTQ reasons, family, sexual abuse, anything that you could possibly need help with, they'll match you with someone that specializes in that sort of help. I was able to find a therapist um, based on the questionnaire that they have you fill out. So it's a questionnaire that like you state like the just general questions of like how you feel every day, whether or not that's affecting you, um, what kind of help you think you need. It's just like a really comprehensive sort of beginning and intro to finding a therapist that works for you. I'll leave my link down below if you want to check it out. BetterHelp has been really, really great for me and I'm going to get into more details in a second about how BetterHelp has helped me. I know that it can be really hard to make appointments and like meet people in, in person. I have a lot of anxiety when it comes to like going to doctor's appointments. I've missed so many doctor's appointments because I've just been so nervous about like going. There's a lot of things that make BetterHelp more accessible to people who need help. I think it's really, really great. I'm really grateful that BetterHelp wanted to work with me. Like I said, I'll leave the link down below if you're interested. Let's get into the video. If you're new to this channel and you might not have realized, I've been struggling with eczema pretty much my entire life. I did a video a while back. It was a bit of an emotional video about sort of my relationship with people and how eczema has affected my life and how I view myself and where I fit in the world, how it's like affected my self-esteem and just like in general how I carry myself. I used to have, I mean I have pretty dry hands now and you can see it on my skin, it's aged my skin quite a bit, but I used to get unbelievable hives on my hands, all over my hands. I still get them every now and then if I'm really stressed out, but I used to have cracked hands. I couldn't move my hands past like this sort of claw shape because it hurt to close my hands and it hurt to fully extend my fingers. I've learned about a lot of different things that have helped me over the past couple of years. This video is not meant to tell you this is how you need to heal your eczema. Everybody is different. Everyone's story and eczema journey is different and their path to healing is different. So I'm just gonna share with you what's worked for me. By no means is my eczema totally healed it's something that's ongoing as we're going to talk about in a moment this is just how I've helped my eczema and I hope that maybe it'll help you heal yours so I've always had like eczema sort of coming and going in my life I mean there's like a lot of different things that have sort of affected me over my life I'm a very anxious person I overthink everything in those times where I have felt very like down and dark and hopeless I have had really bad eczema flare-ups so in the midst of exam season or when I had some sort of traumatic experiences when I was a kid, when I had a really big breakup. These kind of like bigger sort of life moments that caused a lot of stress and anxiety and sort of distress in my life directly caused my eczema. I didn't notice it at the time because it's like, it's all kind of gradual. Like you, you don't just wake up one day and just feel stressed. It's just kind of something that builds up over time. I've been using BetterHelp for about a month now and I have been matched with a therapist who has been really, really great. It's very casual. I'm an awkward person and I much prefer talking over chat than over the phone or Skype. So my therapist has been really great. She doesn't judge me for how I express myself. She says I can express myself however I want. She has always been very like perceptive and I mean as therapists are want to do, um, very accurate in sort of analyzing what's going on in my life and how it's affecting me and like my eczema manifests as a way of me like controlling my body if that makes any sense. Like I'll often have like one or two patches. Like when I first started getting eczema on my hands, I would get kind of like small patches on my on my palms or like kind of like on my knuckles or like here as well. Over time I think I like could scratch and that was like something that felt good but also bad at the same time. Eczema was a way of me to like manifest control and if you have been around my channel for a while, you know that I, I more or less have a lot of issues when it comes to like control. For example, I don't drink because I don't like being not in control of like my surroundings and my reactions and like me in general. I also don't do any drugs. I have no problem with anyone doing whatever they want. Like you do you, as long as you don't hurt anybody or any animals, like 
I'm cool with it. But personally for me, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I don't do anything that like inhibits my self-control. I never realized that that was a really big thing, but it relates to this like traumatic experience that I had as a kid about being powerless. BetterHelp has been really interesting to kind of like get the help that I needed because I have a lot of unresolved issues. Addressing them and dealing with them have been directly beneficial. Like you can see it on my skin. Of course, anxiety and stress aren't the only cause for my eczema, but mitigating it and addressing it and preventing those kind of things in my life has helped a lot. So if you have access to a therapist, if you want to check out BetterHelp, it's really helped me and I hope it helps you too. So one of the other things that has really helped me is some of you've probably seen if you watch my favorite videos, which I haven't done them in a while. I always noticed that I would get like large amounts of unsubscribes every time I would post a favorites video. So I kind of got afraid of posting one. So if you guys like my favorites videos, you can watch them over here. If you want more, let me know in the comments if you want to do, if you want me to do more. I like doing them. I just, I, don't know, I just kind of got out of the habit. One of the things that has really helped me is this uh, Derma E Tea Tree and E Cream. Specifically this one. I've tried a bunch of different creams from the Derma E line and they've all been quite nice, but nothing has helped me like this cream has. This is like my 10th tub or my 11th tub. And in case you didn't know, the blisters that happen or like the hives that I would get are related to a staph infection. So when you have eczema on your hands or on areas of your skin that like have more exposure to like life. I don't know, there's staph bacteria everywhere, right? Like it's not like I'm just dirty. It's very common for people who have eczema on their hands to get those sort of hives because it's a result of a staph infection like on your skin. So doctors will often prescribe steroid creams or other antibiotic creams or stuff like that. But I have found that my body just like gets used to steroids, heals for like a week or two. And then once I stop using the steroid, my skin is like thin and like I go back to having an eczema flare up all over again. And I don't really know about the sort of situation of like steroids and animal testing and stuff like that. So I've just steered clear of steroid creams for the past like four years. With a staph infection, what you wanna do is you wanna sort of like sanitize your hands or like prevent blisters from happening. And the way I've been doing that is with tea tree. So tea tree is a naturally antiseptic substance. It's like a, it's a liquid. Tea tree cream has really, really helped me. I'll leave a link down below if you want this specific one in general. It's kind of like a thicker paste. It's been really good. I use this anywhere where I have eczema patches. It's just like honestly so great. I've literally bought this from iHerb, from well.ca, from natural food stores. I find it's cheapest and most affordable when I go to a health food store either in Mississauga or in Toronto. They're cheaper in Kensington than they are in Mississauga. This has been like my lifesaver. I buy this in batches every couple months. I buy like four or five tubs at a time. The next thing I wanna talk about is allergens. So if you're not new to this channel, you probably are aware that I don't eat nuts. So I am not anaphylactic allergic. Like if I touch them, I'll be fine. Something touches the food that I'm eating, I should be fine, but I just like can't eat the nuts themselves. This has always kind of happened like ever since I was younger. I I couldn't eat raw almonds, I couldn't eat raw mac macadamia nuts. They would make my throat really itchy and my lips really itchy, but I would have them roasted and it would be fine. So I connected this to my oral allergy syndrome where I can't eat certain fruits or vegetables because of the way that I'm allergic to certain pollens. So I'm allergic to like, I think birch, which is connected to cherries, kiwis, almonds, a few other things. I can't eat most stone fruits, although I can eat peaches and dates. So I've sort of been more conscious about what I'm eating, especially since I went vegan, I've been more aware of how my body reacts to things. And it's been really helpful that I haven't been eating nuts for the past uh, two years. If you don't really know what is making your body kind of like angry, I suggest maybe trying a elimination diet. Although I would recommend seeing a dietitian who can help you make sure that you're getting what you need in a day. I have interviewed Dr. Pamela Ferguson, who has been on my channel to talk about supplements, which I'll get into in a second before so if you want to watch that video go over there but also I'll leave Pamela's information down below because she's a really really great person she's vegan she has a PhD in nutrition and she's very knowledgeable and very non-judgmental the next thing that has been really helpful for me has been supplements now as someone who hates taking medication it took me a really long time to get on board with supplements so ever since I was like 18 I've been deficient in b12 so this is before I was even vegetarian let alone vegan this supplement a very high dose of B12 because it's water soluble. You'll just pass whatever you don't need. I was so bad at taking this, like so bad. And it wasn't until I was vegan that I was like, okay, I need to like take this more regularly. But even now I still don't really take it that often. So it's one of the supplements that I take. So let's pull out all the different supplements that I take right now that have helped me. A few months ago, I started taking vitamin D, specifically D3, which is typically derived from sheep's wool, but I, can, I found a vegan version that's derived from lichen. This has made a huge difference in my skin, like unbelievable. I can sleep better. I have more energy. 
energy, heal faster, and my skin isn't as like angry all the time. Someone who has more information and more knowledge about how the body works and how vitamin D affects your body can probably tell you what vitamin D does for you. And I think Pamela also mentioned it in the supplement video that I linked before that I've done before. Getting vitamin D as a vegan can be kind of difficult. I have really loved taking this uh, supplement. It's changed my life, honestly. So the other thing that has helped me a lot has been these probiotics. You don't need to take a probiotic to get probiotics in your body. If you eat fermented foods like kimchi or sauerkraut, pickles, any of those kinds of foods, those have natural bacteria that are probiotic and that like, you know, create happy gut bacteria in your body. Oh, kombucha, kombucha is another good one. So this probiotic has been really, really good. I got this from Hum Nutrition. It has 10 strains and 25 BN organisms. I don't know what that means, but I like it. I like it a lot. These are vegan capsules. Um, not all supplements will have like the vegan capsules. So you want to double check that they are vegetarian and or vegan. And as long as you're eating lots of whole grains, prebiotic foods, basically things that are like rich in fiber, then um, your, your gut bacteria will have lots of things to kind of snack on and be happy about. Another thing that has been quite helpful, I haven't been as like good about taking it as I should, but it has been zinc. My nails have gotten a lot better, like ever since I started taking it, which is about like three or four weeks ago, like I see like a sort of difference from like where it's like really, really bumpy to like where it's smoother because I've been taking the zinc. Another thing that has been really great has been uh, vegan DHA. So this is like pretty common knowledge, but omega-3s are really important for your skin, for your body, for your brain. But as a vegan, it can be hard to get your omega-3s because I mean, some of the biggest sources that people know of, of omega-3s is like fish oil, right? I used to eat a lot of fish when I was growing up, so that's probably why my skin was like sort of okay up until I went vegetarian and vegan, but I like wasn't supplementing properly or not eating a lot of omega rich foods. So things that are rich in omega-6 are like flax seeds, chia seeds, but our bodies aren't as efficient in converting the short chain into the long chain. I don't really know a whole lot about it. We talk about it in the supplement video. I'll defer to Pamela in that video if you want to hear about that. I have timestamps in the description of that video. DHA has been really helpful. I feel a lot more alert. My skin feels better all around, like all these different things have been really helpful. I don't know if they're like exactly helping, but I, I feel like everything is sort of helping and like it hasn't gotten worse. <laughs> because since I've taken them, but these are other supplements from Hum Nutrition. I'll leave my referral code down below if you wanna use it. I think you get, I think you get a discount from it, but I'm not too sure. So this is the red carpet one and this is the Arctic Repair one. Not all the supplements on the site are vegan. You have to double check that they say that they have a vegetarian capsule, which makes it vegan. I like these two. These are like both about like um, anti-aging, skin repair and that kind of stuff. So those have been really great for me. Those are the supplements essentially that I've been taking every day. Because this is a lot of bottles to open every single day, I kind of do it once a week and I put it in these like pill tray things. There's probably some that are like, you should take this not with a bunch of other supplements, but you know what? Things have been working so far, so I'm not gonna change what I'm doing. Um, but some of them are fat soluble, so you need to eat food that has fat content in them with them. So just follow the instructions on the bottles and or your dietitian slash physician. Another thing that has been really helpful has been like things that have been distracting or like cathartic for me. So one of them is the pop socket on my phone. Um, you guys have seen it before. My phone is charging, so I'm not going to bring it out here with you, but it's the thing that's kind of like on the back and it just kind of like pops up and pops down. It just allows me to like kind of fidget with it, like in public if I'm feeling anxious or I'll have the, like the urge to scratch, which often happens. So like I'll end up like scratching like this underneath my shirt um, and having the pop socket helps me to sort of distract myself and defer to that sort of stimulation instead of scratching. Another thing that has been helpful has been this fidget cube. It's essentially a cube of different sort of like things that are distracting stim toys. This has really helped me. Um, it's like kind of low key. It's not as like distracting as a fidget spinner. If I'm feeling stressed out or anxious in general, I just kind of like have this in my hand and I just kind of like play with it. There's like more silent toys or like silent sides. I will leave a link down below. This has also been really helpful for me to deal with stress and mitigate my eczema. The last thing, water. So I mentioned that I don't really drink alcohol anymore. And I've also cut down on my, my consumption of juice and pop and soda and that kind of thing. As you know, your body uses a lot of water. Um, your body's made up of a lot of water. I don't know the exact amount, but I'm sure you can look it up. Drinking water a lot more has helped me. Upping my water intake to about two liters a day um, minimum has been helpful, although I don't always get that much water in, so. When it comes to like eating certain foods, I wouldn't say that I'm eating healthier or like less healthy. I'm pretty much eating the same amount like of junk that I would before. You guys know that I'm not like a healthy vegan. I don't necessarily eat whole foods all the time, but I'm always eating vegan food. The time that I was eating the unhealthiest was when when I was in Europe, I was like in London recently. If you want to watch those vlogs, I'll leave those there. But you can see all the food that we ate. And my skin actually got so much better in the weeks that we were there. Like it was kind of unbelievable how much I was able to like have functional hands again. It was really, really great. I mean, obviously it would probably be better if you ate healthier all the time, but I'm just telling you that like for me, 
I didn't really eat any healthier. I still eat lots of oil, lots of fried foods, lots of bread, lots of rice, and I'm doing okay. I think that pretty much wraps this all up. If you want any more information about any of the things that I've mentioned, including BetterHelp, I'll link them down below. Like I said, if you want to try out BetterHelp, I'll leave my link down below for you to check it out. A big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. It's really great to work with companies that are doing better things for the world. They're helping people get access to mental health services at a more affordable price than traditional means. If any of you are watching this and you are dealing with Exiba and you're having a flare up right now, I really wish you the best. I hope you're able to stay strong and work through this. Just know that it will pass and you are beautiful. That pretty much wraps up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a like if you like this video. Comment down below if you have anything else to share, if you have experience with better help. I always try to answer the comments down below because interacting with you guys is probably one of the favorite things that I like to do in a day. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you guys have a delicious day. Bye.